So, Joseph, how are you? Good. Good. Uh, my real name is Joseph, but out here I go by LJ. LJ? Yeah. LJ, um, where are you from? Originally? originally I'm a, I've been living in Philadelphia since 1999. Before that, I was uh, in the Lower Bucks County area. That's PA? Yeah, Pennsylvania suburbs, outside Philly, about 20 minutes, a half hour outside Philly. Gotcha. And how old are you? 43. 43. How long have you been homeless for? Since um, about 2001. 2001? 22 years. What, what led to that? Uh, my mom died. Um, I got hooked on drugs, cocaine, crack, methamphetamines, um, heroin. That was the one. Heroin makes you, um, when you do heroin, you become a totally different person. Like, you can do cocaine, go to sleep, wake up, and go back to work. Um, me, my thing is when I do heroin, you know, or now, you know, xylazine or, or tranquilizer or whatever, you know, they're putting in the bag because we never know what it is. Um, it, uh, it, it changes your whole mind, your whole body, your whole DNA, the way you think, the way you care about things. The, your responsibilities no longer exist. So you can just stop going to work and just, you know, I build myself up. I get clean for a couple of years or 10 months or whatever and at a time and, and during that time span I'll, I'll get a great job and a beautiful girlfriend and a nice apartment and you know get a car bank account you know I'll do the whole domestic lifestyle get everything thing. back yeah and uh, and then I'll start getting high and, and, and I do it on purpose I, it's like I, I self-sabotage I mean, you got any kids? No kids. No. Uh, me and heroin have been in a monogamous relationship for about 20 years. Yeah. And she's a, she's a fickle mistress. <laughs> so she won't share. What's the but, difference between the high in heroin and the high in trank? Everything. In Is it? Anything, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> heroin, you should be able to do a bag. And you're like, oh, you know, you feel great. And you're, you're out the door, you go to work, and you're fucking, you're at work, you're, 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 you're charismatic, and you're comfortable, and you're, you know, you're warm, and you're, and, and, and you just, you know, everything's great. Now, tranquilizer, this, this, this stuff we're doing is, they're calling it heroin, but it's not. There's no heroin in it, and there's no fentanyl in it. It's all trank. I've tested 20 bags in one day, and not one of them came up positive for fentanyl or heroin. So it's, it's all trank, all trank 100% trank or whatever else. What do you uh, think you typically spend a day on drugs? Well, if I don't get the samples and make them last me, then uh, I'll do, you know, typically about 80 bucks, 100 bucks 80? a day. 80 to 100. Yeah. What do you typically do, to, you know, daily to get that money? I buy, sell, trade items off the street, trash pick, a um, little bit of boosting. Uh, Yeah, that's about it. No, nothing. Are the, are or the I sell drugs on the corners. I look out for drug dealers. I make runs. Yeah. You know. Are the withdrawals from Trank similar to heroin? No, they're worse. Tranquilizer withdrawal is one of the worst withdrawals I've ever been through. Is it? Yeah, it lasts. I mean, it comes on so strong. I don't know where all of a sudden you're just sick. What are the symptoms bad. like? Throwing up and cold sweats? Um, it's no. It's like a complete body shutdown. Is it? You can't. You just can't move. And then you start shitting on yourself. Yeah. What do you yeah. feel like the hardest part about trying to get clean is? Um, the hardest part about trying to get clean? There's no hard part in trying to get clean. There really well, is. You had mentioned you, you were in rehab and things like that. Yeah, what I was, you, I was in rehab once. I left rehab. That's why I came here from rehab. Yeah. Um, have, they, have any of those been successful? No, I only have, that's it, just one, one time have I been to rehab. In a, in a, I mean, you, know, you could say I was a drug addict since, since I was like 13, right? Yeah. What happened to your finger, if you don't mind me asking? This, that's a good question, right? <laughs> this is, um, five months ago I had a finger. And um, I was trash picking. And... Uh, a piece of barbed wire was in there that I didn't know was there. Um, well, I did know it was there, but I didn't know it, 
It was at that angle because they had these little placards with these uh, antique uh, barbed wire samples. And that stuff's like art, you know. They um, take it to Center City, like fix it up, scrub it, hit it with a wire brush, whatever, spray paint it, and then take it to Center City. And uh, people buy it, you know, put it on their walls and stuff. So <clears throat> this piece of barbed wire went in my finger. I pulled it out, and it was, um, didn't bleed or anything. It was fine. The little bump came up like three weeks later, and I popped it. And the next morning when I woke up, the skin was uh, splitting on my finger. It was swollen so hard so fat that... It, what was it, just infection? Yeah, but it, it was a roaring infection. <laughs> and um, so I was in and out of the hospital a couple times, and they wanted to put me on uh, emergency surgery list, you know? And I didn't want to lose the finger, number one. And number two, I didn't want to go on the... The diet <laughs> that comes with the emergency surgery list, which is uh, basically no protein ever. So you don't get to eat until you get surgery. And it can take three, four days. So you're just on ice chips for three, four days. I'm like, listen, I just came in off the street starving. You know, I'm not on street drugs, hard drugs. I'm on whatever you're giving me. It's barely enough to make it so I'm not crawling out of my skin. And uh, now you don't want to give me no food. <laughs> So I left the hospital a couple times, and uh, I took care of the finger myself. You cut, it, you cut the finger off yourself? The first part fell off by itself. The second part was being a little reluctant, so I wrapped it in tin foil and fishing string, and I tied it to a stop sign, and I ran until it popped off. Hold on, repeat that? So, <laughs> so, so what I wrapped so my what finger. I wrapped what was left of my finger from this knuckle to this knuckle, because uh -huh. the top knuckle fell off, pop. It, after like three weeks, the top knuckle was just a bone. For a month and a half, I sat around here with this finger was just a bone. Like that, like that? But, the, but, but what you see is there was a bone there. With all the flesh was gone. The bone was sticking out. It was like, ah, like tails from crypt. Like, literally like a finger with a bone sticking out of it. Wow. And, uh, was that it, painful? It was, yeah, what? I mean, at I first, can ima imagine. At first it was, it was but then once the, all the flesh was gone and the nerves were dead, it didn't hurt no more. It was like a rubbery, the bone and, itself. And you tied it to a stop sign and, and took the rest so basically off? Basically, I wrapped what was left of the bone at the knuckle, because I knew there was a knuckle here. I wrapped it in, in tin foil and tied some fishing string around it. And I tied, you know, about a 15 foot length of it to it, the other end to, to, to the stop sign. And I just ran like I was pulling a tooth out. Except for I was pulling the finger off. Popped right off, didn't even hurt. Didn't, didn't hurt? Didn't even hurt. Barely, barely bled. Wow. How'd you get it, like, sealed shut? It did that by itself. Did it? Yeah, I wrapped it up real tight. Used a little bit of super glue. And it's, and it's sealed shut by itself. No surgery or nothing. You ever tried to go, you think maybe you should go to the hospital or? What, for this? Yeah. It's, it's sealed. It's, it didn't, nothing swollen or nothing. It yeah. started to swell my hand up a little bit. That's what scared me. But then that went away. So it, it means that it got contained. The infection got contained inside the finger. You an IV drug user? Yes. Yes. How, I had uh, hepatitis C twice. Have you? I beat it once. Um, came home, reinfected. Went, went to state prison. Did the cure again. I'm, good. I'm clean now. No HIV, no hepatitis. What did you go to prison for? Well, I was selling drugs, and um, a guy I knew came, bought, you know, a couple of bags. And I, what I was doing was called freelance and poaching. Basically, I was poaching customers. I had a bunch of bags with the stamp from this corner over here, and I put my own dope in them. And I was selling them as their dope, because their dope was really good. And I was taking customers to make my dope self faster. Well, he bought it twice off me and came back for his third time and said, let me get two. So I was on, you know, benzos and heroin. I reached down underneath the railroad tie, grabbed my bundle, and he hit me in the back of the head with a table leg. One of those square, like, long oak with table legs. And I just went ballistic and stabbed him a couple times. Yeah. Trying to stop him from hitting me. And uh, he was doing... Parole or probation or something like that. So <laughs> he didn't miss a court date. Can't every single one. Even though he tried to rob me, 
You went how, the much, same? how much time you do? Eight, eight years. Eight years straight? Yep. Yep, from um, 2012 to 2020. What's the most dangerous situation you've been in out here that you can remember? <laughs> I'm in dangerous daily situations every day. Um, the most dangerous situation was I had my Chrysler 200 and my sister and my my older sister and my younger sister were in the car with me and we were riding, coming down here from West Philly. She had an apartment, we were standing there. And um, I fell asleep at the wheel. So all three of us are sleeping, driving, you know, on the Skook or whatever, along the expressway. And, uh, I just woke up and I was <laughs> about you know three feet away from slamming into the back of a car. I couldn't do anything. She was an Allegheny. Plowed in the back of this uh, 2022 uh, Nissan Altima rental car. Were your sisters all right? My sister, neither of them had seatbelts on or anything. In fact, my little sister was in the front seat, with her feet up on the dashboard. <laughs> Do you have any family still around here, local, that can help support you or kind of yeah, I saw be there for you? I saw one of my sisters yesterday that I haven't seen in once. Um, my mother's dead. She died of AIDS. AIDS? Uh, yeah. Um, my, she got it from her fourth husband, <laughs> ironically. Her fourth husband gave her AIDS. Um, <laughs> after all the years of getting drugs and, and, and doing shit, she finally was to get clean and then tested her for her AIDS. And it frees her out, and she's been blessed in the tunnel for years. Is there anybody else in your family addicted? Yeah. I mean, my older sister Sharon's addicted. My younger sister is addicted. My, my, um, my little, my, my, my little brother is addicted to crime. He doesn't do drugs, but he's just a crime act. He does, like, uh, <laughs> Car jackings and he runs up to people at red lights with baseball bats and smacks them in the helmet, knocks them off the motorcycle and takes off. And then we go buy a frame in the junkyard and switch it all over. And now he's got himself a new high booster. So he does dumb, crazy stuff, you know. Yeah. We don't need drugs, he just takes it to, you know, dysfunction. Joseph, before we wrap it up, man, if there's, a, if there's people who may see this, young children, teenagers, um, you know, anybody who may be kind of going through some situations similar to you, what would your advice to them be? <laughs> well, I'm, you mean leading up to it? See, I was born into drugs. Um, I was addicted. When I was a, an infant, I had to be weaned off it. And I didn't know that growing up as a kid. I didn't know anything about my drug history or me being on drugs already. And, and, I believe honestly that when I was in my mother's womb that all the drugs that she was doing when they went into my body, they changed the way I developed. They changed the way I learned, they changed the way I asked, or we asked, and you know, and how angry I get, how, you know, how quickly that happens, and, and how much I need drugs now, you know, because it's, it's, it's the only thing that makes me feel like a uh, whole person. I don't feel like I fit in into society. I don't feel like I'm normal unless I'm high. I don't know if it makes any sense, but I'm totally detached from everybody. I'm, I mean, I'm there, I'm at the parties, and I'm drinking the eggnog and smiling and holding my girl's hand, and I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking, like, I got all these people fooled. <laughs> like they really think that I'm like them, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm different. I was always different. I don't know. Well, Joseph, I'm going to keep you in my prayers, man, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.